Hi everyone, it's Nicole and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do some embossed resist tips and techniques for backgrounds as well as adding colors to die cuts with Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated Inks. Most everything you see here today, with the exception of the smaller phrases, is from the Simon Says Stamp Dream Big release. This is the new release for July 2022. So what we're going to do first is ink up some background panels. I'm using my Waffle Flower stencil mat here in the background. I know it's stained, so it's kind of ugly, uh, but it really works fantastic for this in order to not make a mess on my cutting mat. I have some four by five and a quarter inch panels that I am going to start by inking up with some light green inks. So we're using the trio that has Sprout, Fairway, and Field. I'm only going to use Sprout and Fairway on these panels. You'll notice that the Sprout is going to be about the top third of the panel, and then the bottom two-thirds of the panel is going to be the Fairway color. And I am going to do this on four cards. So something that I have been making a big effort in doing lately is when I have my supplies out, just going ahead and making more than one. That way I always have cards on hand when I need them. I have found I need a lot of uh, birthday cards. Uh, I send birthday cards to my Patreon members. And so I always need a lot of those and also for friends and family. But I unfortunately have needed like thinking of you, get well soon, sympathy cards, things like that. And so a lot of times I try to find a design that will work for many occasions. And I know this is something I talk about a lot and have talked a lot about a lot lately, but I can't emphasize enough that it is so nice to be able to have a card design that's going to work no matter what you need it for. So maybe you need friendship, maybe you need um, miss you, anniversary, I, anything that you can think of basically here. And obviously thinking of you, sympathy, uh, get well soon, just a hello card, birthday cards, whatever the case may be. I feel like this design really will work for any of those things. Now I'm inking up my panels first because I want my ink to completely dry before we start the next technique or the next step of the background technique. So the first step is adding our color to the base. You can do this with um, a couple of different colors, several different colors, whatever you want to do. This is gonna be the base color that when we stamp over the top of this and then emboss with clear embossing powder, this is what it, the design, that's the color it's going to be. So keep that in mind. And I want this dry because I want the embossing powder not to stick to any of the other areas other than the stamped design that we're going to be adding on top. And that background stamp is from the new release and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Once I have all of my ink, I'm simply going to set these aside and I have already die cut all of the components I need for my cards um, off camera and we are going to ink these up, assemble them, and about the time that we have that done, which it is pretty time consuming because we need four, I have four backgrounds, we're making four cards. By the time I have that done, our backgrounds will be dry and I won't have to add heat to them. So we are starting with one of the new dies from the Dream Big release. This is called the Blossom Vine. I always love the floral dies from Simon Says Stamp. And I decided to do the two flower buds here in two different colors. I want three different colors of flowers. So we've got this one, I have another floral dye, and I can't even say it, what the flower is. I am not good with flower names, you guys. It's the Alstromeria. I'm probably saying that wrong, don't laugh. Um, anyway, I want three different colors of blooms for my card. So I want those three colors. We have lots of greenery and then we're going to have the hummingbird. So I went ahead and did each of these buds on this particular uh, blossom vine in pinks and oranges. And the color combination I am using for pink 
is Carnation Peony and Rose Positively Saturated Ink. And look at the great little layering pieces there. And for the orange, we're using Melon, Cantaloupe, and Sherbet. And I am going to do this for all four flowers. So I'm going to do a couple of them here, and then I'm going to speed up the process. Um, at times, I may even cut part of it out. Sometimes when I'm inking up the first one, I don't always love it as much as the rest of them. That's one of the benefits of doing multiples is sometimes I call it my tester, the first one, and then I figure out what I like and what I don't. Um, but I do did go ahead and use all of them here. And I love these small round detail brushes for adding color right where you want it on die cuts. This is such a quick way to add color. So while there are quite a few steps involved in this card set, I will take you from start, tell you, pardon me, from start to finish, my cards took I want to say two and a half to three hours. I wasn't exactly timing it. Um, yeah, most everything was done in two hours time. I did time that part and then I forgot to restart my timer to, so I could tell you guys exactly. Um, but the assembly took me probably another 30 to 45 minutes. The stems for my florals, I wanted that to be a different green color combination than what I'm using for the background. And we'll talk a little more about the background when we get back to it, but I am using Dublin and Lucky for that, so it's going to be quite a bit brighter. And we're going to go ahead and just continue assembling these flowers. And like I said, I am going to speed this up a little bit now that I have the process pretty much streamlined and ready to go. So there is what that looks like. It's so pretty. I used the small round detail blending brushes for this step and it worked like a dream. So here is the much sped up version of this. This is the Dublin color first. And you can see how the small brushes are fantastic for not pulling such a delicate dye at all. And then we're gonna add in some Lucky. And then we will move on to the flowers. And the light color we're using all over first for the pink is of course Carnation. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do all of the pink so let's grab all of the pink pieces and then we're using Rose and Peony. Let me zoom out just a little bit as well. And the large stencil mat works fantastic, fantastic here. You can see I have all of my stacks of dies. I still have plenty of room to work, but it really does kind of help contain all of the little parts and pieces, especially like the hummingbird has some pretty teeny tiny pieces. The next flower stem we're doing has quite a few parts and pieces. So it just kind of helped contain everything nicely while I was working. And then of course, our melon, cantaloupe and sherbet. And we're going to simply assemble these. So then, what happened was I forgot to turn my camera back on. I paused it while I was doing something and I forgot to turn it back on, so I do apologize. So the coloring part of the yellow flowers is not going to be on camera. You're only going to kind of come in part way through as I start assembling, but it is the same exact process that you saw me do for this blossom vine. And that is going to be with some yellow colors this time. So my blooms are yellow, orange, and pink. And that is going to be with Lemonade, Sunbeam, and Citrine. And then the same Lucky and Dublin colors for the stem. There are several pieces here. So there's the base, this first flower petal, then kind of down here, the bottom flower petal piece, and finally the little edge on this blossom. And it's so beautiful, you guys. And you can cut this from solid cardstock. You can color it with Copic markers or your other favorite uh, watercolors or coloring medium, whatever the case may be. There's lots of different ways to add color here. Um, inks are kind of my recent 
favorite go-to. I feel like they're quick and easy with beautiful results with all the fabulous like detail blending brushes out there. For this next die, this is the Sword Fern, pardon me. This is also new from the Dream Big release. We are going to add some darker green colors here. So this is going to be the sage and pine colors. I did sage first, and then we're gonna go kind of down the center of the leaf with our pine color. I wanted lots of different greens, for my card for a lot of added interest for the little floral bundle we're going to put together. And this would be beautiful even on its own, I think. It's a really beautiful statement leaf. Look at the detail, so, so pretty. Okay, for our hummingbird. So this was highly requested. Um, and I am going to ink this up with three completely different colors. So none of these colors are going a trio together. This is Tropic, Orchid, and Royal. And I think this might be my new favorite color combination. I absolutely adore these together. So you can see that the body I did Tropic, then the wing, I did some Orchid on the outer part of the wing, and then I'm going in with the Tropic on the inner part. And then this is the layering piece for the wing. I'm also gonna add a little bit deeper orchid there on the outer tip. And then for the tail, I'm also going to add some orchid. Now let's move on to our royal color. And for the face, the layering piece for the face around the eye, I'm gonna do royal. And I totally had the wrong blending brush there, so ignore me. I had like the little flat one. I wondered why it wasn't inking up very well. And then on the body, I am going to start inking and blending in some royal over the tropic. Then I'm going to add the royal in with the orchid on the layering piece for the wing and also for the tail. So I think Royal looks beautiful with Tropic and with Orchid, and that's kind of what I was going for. And then about this point, I realized I definitely need more Orchid on this wing, so I'm just gonna go in. I didn't even re-ink it with the ink pad. I just used what was left on the blending brush to add more color. And then we're gonna use Charcoal Positively Saturated Ink for the beak. Let's put it all together. It is so easy to put together. It just is quite a few little pieces here, but oh my goodness, you guys, gorgeous. Some reverse tweezers are awesome because it does help hold everything in place. There is a little line or several little lines, I should say, on the hummingbird. So it really helps you line up where everything goes. An embellishment wand is so handy. And look at that. Look at the beautiful hummingbird. I'm gonna do this three more times. I have to say the hummingbird may be one of my favorite uh, parts of the Dream Big release. So pretty. I can't wait to see what um, some of the other designers have done with this beautiful, beautiful die. Once all of these are assembled, I'm going to set all of my dies aside for a little bit. And oh, I should also mention about the hummingbird eye. We're gonna completely ignore the eye for now. I'm gonna show you how I'm going to approach that in a little bit. I don't wanna try to inlay that teeny tiny piece or ink it up or die cut it four times from black cardstock, any of those things. We're just going to add a pearl to that when we add it to our card. So that's going to be a little bit later. But I'm keeping stacks kind of above out of range of my camera of all of my parts and pieces. And now we can go back to our background. So for our background, we are now going to take another new product from the Dream Big release. This is the Talavera, Talavera Vine. Again, I'm probably saying that wrong, but... Let's just go with it, the vine background, let's call it that. And I'm gonna take each of my backgrounds, which are beautifully ink blended, but they are kind of blah. So we are going to stamp this vine with the Simon Says Stamp Clear Embossing Ink, and then we're going to heat set with the Clear Embossing Powder. And I'm actually using uh, the Clear Embossing Ink, uh, ink pad, pardon me, 
is part of the August card kit, which I think is awesome. Um, I always love a fresh, clear embossing ink pad. I don't know about you guys, but I can always use a new one because I use it all the time. And then after I've inked it, I am going to use clear embossing ink to retain the color of the background. So remember when I inked it at the beginning, I said that is the color of the vine. So this ink blended background of Sprout and Fairway is what is going to be maintained. So I'm sprinkling on the clear embossing powder and when I heat set this, you're going to see it turn clear. And it just makes the vines nice and shiny. So this is pretty, just like this, but I'm gonna show you kind of going all the way extra today. So let's go ahead and do our remaining couple of backgrounds. I should also mention I'm using the Rabbit Hole Designs Powder Tool, and I'm also using um, this little press tool on my Misty to get a really good stamped design the first time so I don't have to re-ink it or anything like that. This is a beautiful background stamp, you guys. I think there's so many fun ways and fun techniques you can do with this. It's a great basic. I know I say it all the time, but I love background stamps. And I completely got clear embossing powder everywhere. So I had to clean that up really quick and then we'll do the last one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to switch out the background stamp for a background stamp that I already have in my stash. Now I should tell you I'm using the thank you text background from Simon Says Stamp. However, um, you could use any of the texts and I thought I was gonna do all thank you cards just to be completely upfront when I started before I stamped all my sentiments and then I decided let's go ahead and do a variety and I guess I only, and I didn't even end up using the thank you. That's the funny part of this. But the text doesn't matter because not that much of it is actually going to be seen. So again, I'm going to put my background in my Misty. I'm going to use this text background, which we're just basically using it for text anyway. And we're going to ink it up with field ink, which is the darkest color in that Sprout, Fairway, and Field trio. And the embossed areas of the vine is going to resist the text. So it looks pretty cool, but I think the vine gets a little lost in this, but don't worry, we are going to add a little extra ink, which makes the vine pop here in a minute. But I wanna add my text first. So we're gonna do this for all four backgrounds. And I'm just wiping away any text on top of the clear embossed area with my microfiber cloth. And then I'm gonna set these aside for just a second while we stamp our greetings, but we are gonna come back to those and add a little extra ink blending. So I'm taking from the brand new Big and Bold stamp set, at part of the Dream Big release. I love this. And we're gonna use Thinking of You and Happy Birthday. I completely changed my direction halfway through, but decided I didn't wanna redo the backgrounds. And really, you don't need to. No one's really reading the text. I just want that hint of a text background. You guys know I love my text backgrounds. And I have a half sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper, and I'm simply going to flip it around and stamp these two sentiments twice. And then I'm gonna use the coordinating dies to die cut them. There is a new low, low tack tape in the Dream Big release from Simon Says Stamp, which is perfect for taping your die in place when running through your die cutting machine. So here I've got my dies, here I've got this new tape. We're just going to line them up, run it through the die cutting machine, and I'm gonna do this twice. Just use a little bit of the tape, and I use the same piece of tape until it's not sticky. So I used it a few times here. And then I'm just, I ran over to my die cutting machine instead of moving it over uh, into the screen. And then we'll do that one more time. Then I am going to take some smaller phrases from the Simon Says Stamp Tiny Words Encouragement Stamp Set. And this is not a new product, but I did use this actually in my other video featuring the Dream Big release that I will link at the end of this one. Um, I love the tiny 
words stamp sets. They are some of my most often and most used. So I'm just going to pick greetings from this that work with birthday cards and that work with thinking of you cards. And by doing that, I was able to get extra phrases that are not the same for all four cards. So I'm using wishing the happiest of days to a wonderful person. That's a birthday greeting while well, I'm using it as a birthday greeting. I'm here for you for the thinking of you card, hang in there for the thinking of you card, and have a great day for the other birthday card. And I'm going to stamp those with the Versafine Onyx Black Ink as well. And then we're going to die cut these with my very favorite Simon Says Stamp Sentiment Labels dies so that we have little custom sentiment strips that work with our card design. I always love a little phrase with a bigger, bolder greeting. To me, it just finishes off the set perfectly. And I'm using the Simon Says Stamp stamp cleaner with my microfiber cloth to clean those stamps. I'm going to grab out my sentiment labels dies and then we're going to die cut all of these really quick before we come back to our backgrounds and add that extra little pop of ink that really makes that vine background pop. So here I'm just kind of grabbing some more of that low tack tape. I'm taping my sentiment labels in place and then we're going to run them through uh, the die cutting machine. I've got all of my strips. I've got my stencil mat here and I'm going to go back with the field ink, which is what we used for the text. And I am going to very lightly, mostly around the edges, apply some of that field ink and then wipe away the excess ink so it's not sitting on top of the embossed areas and look at those vines come to life. So we have beautiful lighter green vines in the background, text in the background, and then this dark color that really makes the vines come to life. This is why embossed resist ha continues to be one of my very favorite techniques. All the great ways you can use it to really create one of a kind, stunning, beautiful backgrounds. You could do something very similar with all kinds of different backgrounds that you might already have in your stash. And maybe in any color as well. So let's put it all together now. I have got my fern, I have got all, my two flower stems, and what we're gonna do is glue the flower stems to with the fern together. Right, am I calling that the right thing? The names start to run together. Yes, the sword, the sword, sword fern. Goodness, I can't talk. So I'm just gonna glue them with a tiny dab of glue together to make this little flower leaf bundle, kind of like a floral arrangement. And then I've got some May Arts twine here. You can get this spool at Simon Says Stamp in either the light or the dark. I'm using the lighter uh, version today and then there's like a natural version. I have both of them, I love them. And I'm gonna wrap this around my little floral bundle and tie it into a bow. And I am going to do this for all four cards. We're going to put one together. It's our, remember, it's our tester card. And then we will come back and do all of the rest in mass production. And then we'll just snip up those ends. I am going to put liquid glue on the back of this whole thing then and pop it in place. I'm going to kind of gauge how far over I want my floral arrangement to go compared to my greeting. I'm using the Barely Liquid Glue. You can use any of your favorite liquid glues here. And then just gonna glue that down in place. And I love how the background really just kind of becomes part of the floral arrangement. Um, so pretty, so much interest. Then there also are Simon Says Stamp brand foam adhesive squares. And you guys know that I am here for the foam adhesive. So we are going to put foam adhesive all over the back of the hummingbird. And we want to make sure that there is a foam adhesive square right behind the eye. And that's because I'm gonna put just a little dab of glue right there and then place a black pretty pink posh pearl to finish the eye. And then we're gonna have our little hummingbird hanging out with our floral bundle. That pop of color is gorgeous. And then of course our bold black sentiment on the white cardstock is so showy. And we're gonna pop this up down near the base of our floral bundle. 
I'm using both the large and the small foam adhesive squares. I can tell already I am going to need to get a bunch of these because I love me some foam adhesive squares. And that's not super straight, don't worry, I'll fix it. And then I've got my sentiment strips. I'm going to put some foam adhesive on the back of this and pop it um, either above or below depending on the card design. I kind of switched it up. Yeah, I'm like, wow, that's not straight. Should have got my T-square ruler out. And there are our sentiments. So to finish up the design, we are going to take a black pearl, as I mentioned, and use an embellishment wand to pick it up and put it in place. I love these triangle trays from Simon Says Stamp to hold on to the small embellishments. And then I did opt to do a trio of red hearts. I'm kind of playing around with placement. At first I thought I'd put it on the hummingbird and I was like, no, I don't like that. Um, and so I did a little trio here on the card and I love the little pop of red. I think this works perfectly. I am going to go ahead and put together the other three cards now. Place all of these on white top fold card bases from Simon Says Stamp, and that is going to finish up these Thinking of You and Happy Birthday cards. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these Embossed Resist Backgrounds Tips and Tricks cards featuring components from the Simon Says Stamp Dream Big release. The supplies I use to create my cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another video featuring products from the Simon Says Stamp Dream Big release that you might be interested in. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my Patreon members. If you would like to become a member of Patreon, please click the link in the description below. We would love to have you over there as part of our community. It is growing and I love our community. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new card making video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.